Yeah, next session is again on a very practical, uh, uh, what do you say, problem or uh, a solution that we have in our day to day practice of Vitligo, that is camouflage in Vitligo by Dr. Kanika Sahini. Dr. Kanika? Good evening, everyone, and uh, I thank the organizers, Dr. Devinder and the Global Vitiligo Foundation for uh, inviting me to present uh, on uh, this very important topic of camouflage in vitiligo. And uh, we all are often stuck with a patient in whom we cannot offer anything immediately in terms of medical or surgical management, and it is in these patients that it's very important to consider this as a treatment modality. It's not skipping the slide. It's okay, I'll use the laptop. It's okay. So uh, only a minority of our patients will be able to accept the two different colors on their skin and be able to actually flaunt it, whereas a majority of them have actually a shattered self-confidence and often even suffer from depression and anxiety. And it is in these patients particularly where it comes the role of uh, camouflage, which can be life-changing, and uh, it can really improve their quality of life. And unfortunately, the most visible sites in vitiligo are the ones that lead to the maximum impairment of the quality of life, but these are also the most resistant to treatment. And so there may be a patient who wants immediate response or has a, a family ceremony or a function coming up, and you can't do anything for his vitiligo patches on the face or the acral areas, and that is where uh, camouflage has a very important role to play. So we all know that camouflage uh, literally means uh, to avail or to blind, and uh, it is a way of temporarily concealing a skin condition using a concealing cream or lotion, which may be used apply, uh, using an applicator brush or a sponge, a fixing powder, and a remover. So when we look at the camouflage options for vitiligo, uh, the older options uh, before the modern makeup products came in were the liquid dyes in the indigenous preparations. This was followed by the self-tanning products, which contain dihydroxyacetone, but that does not generally lead to a very good color match. It leads to an orangish discoloration, which is not very acceptable cosmetically by most patients. Then comes the option of permanent camouflage or tattooing, and uh, I'll be uh, speaking a bit about it uh, in the next few slides before I go to cosmetic camouflage, which is gonna form the bulk of my presentation. So when we look at permanent uh, camouflage or tattooing, we often encounter such patients who have tried to conceal their vitiligo patches on their ankles or their exposed sites using commercial tattoos. But of course, this is not an ideal way of uh, concealing their vitiligo. There have been case reports and case studies and publications on the use of uh, micropigmentation for uh, a good color match with the surrounding skin in patients with vitiligo. But we all know that this deposition of pigment needs to happen at an exact depth, and there has to be a very good color match, a mix of uh, the appropriate pigments, so that the color match is uh, excellent. But uh, the initial enthusiasm with, with which uh, tattooing was started as a treatment modality has kind of waned and faded away, because we've seen that over time, either the tattoo pigment begins to get extruded and uh, the effect no longer lasts, or it tends to go deeper into the dermis, leading to a Tyndall effect or a blue color. So here comes the role of cosmetic camouflage. And in the West, uh, the knowledge as well as uh, the practice of camouflage is significantly greater compared to that in India. In fact, uh, the British Association of Skin Camouflage was, uh, uh, was um, started in 1984, and they define it as the art of concealing a discoloration, a blemish, or a scar, with the application of specialist camouflage creams that are matched to the surrounding skin. On the other hand, when we look at the Indian scenario, uh, this is a study published recently from Chandigarh, where um, uh, the authors looked at a group of 30 dermatology residents, and they checked the knowledge, attitude, as well as practice of cosmetic camouflage amongst the dermatology residents. Although all the 30 residents were aware of cosmetic camouflage, but more than half of them had never prescribed it to their patients. 
And the main uh, innovation that they had in recommending camouflage was the availability of camouflage products and the availability of suitable dealers dealing with them. And so uh, this brought, uh, brought into the picture the need for setting up camouflage clinics in larger tertiary centers in order to train dermatology residents as well as improve the, uh, the knowledge and attitude of the dermatology community as such towards this as a modality. So there is no dearth of makeup or camouflage products available, both on the internet as well as physically in stores. But primarily, they consist of uh, three different colors of iron oxide and titanium dioxide, which are uh, combined in different permutations and combinations to give different colors, which match with the patient's skin type. And uh, for conditions other than vitiligo, we need to look at the color chart, where you may need to conceal a, a specific color of skin with a complementary color of the camouflage product. But for vitiligo, all you need to do is to, because it's a white a patch, so you just need to use the same color as the patient's uh, skin, and that is good enough to camouflage it. So the ideal camouflage should have a color that matches appropriately with the patient's skin. It should be opaque. However, it should still have a good holding power, and it should be long wear. It should be easy to apply and easy to remove, and inert and non-allergenic, and while also providing a sunscreening capacity. But when we look at uh, the coverage potential, when we look at the upper left of that chart, uh, the products which have a high coverage potential are generally difficult to apply, and they result in a relatively less natural result. They're heavy. Whereas on the right lower aspect, you can see the ones which have a comfortable texture and good playtime have a less coverage potential. So the ideal camouflage product should achieve a balance between the coverage potential and the, uh, the naturalness of the final appearance. So these are the steps in applying a camouflage uh, product. The first is to counsel the patient. The second is to use the different shades of products which uh, come in the form of tester kits so as to uh, match the appropriate shade that is needed for each patient. And then apply it uh, either using a finger or a makeup brush or a makeup sponge, starting from the center and going outwards. And then fix it with a fixing powder. The removal of the camouflage generally can be done with any water and oil-based cleansing cream. And when we look at the literature on uh, camouflage use for vitiligo and pigmentary conditions, it initially started with some case series and case reports of uh, patients with post-lupus uh, uh, depigmentation on the face or post-burn depigmentation. And this was followed uh, by some larger case series However, none of them were initially uh, you know, uh, restricted to vitiligo or pigmentary disorders alone. They consisted of a diverse group of patients in both adults as well as children, and it was found that they led to a significant improvement in the quality of life following the use of cosmetic camouflage. Now, this was the first study, which it was a pilot study uh, by Dr. Uh, Van Giel on uh, 62 patients who received camouflage uh, for one month uh, as in addition to their uh, routine treatment, and they found that there was a significant reduction in the DLQI over a period of one month. Uh, however, no significant reduction in stigma was perceived, and there was no control group in this study. Uh, this was a study from the Egyptian group, and uh, in this there was a control group, and there was a significant reduction in the DLQI after one month of use of camouflage product. And this was another study from Japan which also showed similar results. However, uh, what are the lacunae or the limitations in the current literature? Most of the studies do not have a control group. They have not used a vitiligo-specific quality of life index. Most of them have used DLQI, which we all know is not very suitable when it comes to measuring the quality of life in vitiligo patients. Uh, in most of them, uh, there has been no um, assessment of the restriction of participation in social events by these patients. Uh, no impact on the stigmatization is assessed. The effect of the uh, intervention on the family member's quality of life is also not assessed, and neither is the acceptability of the camouflage. So I would like to thank Dr. Um, Amit Pandya, who, who suggested me to include acceptability of camouflage in our study. And on the other hand, the Indian population is actually different. We all know that with the starker contrast and the history of leprosy in the Indian subcontinent, they face a much greater stigma. Uh, they have a lower usage of foundations and makeup in general compared to the Western populations. 
And hence, their acceptability to accept camouflage as a modality for treatment is also much lower, apart from their low awareness about it as a modality. So um, at present, we have um, uh, an ongoing thesis by Dr. Shivangi in our department, um, in which uh, we, uh, we, are plan uh, we were doing an, um, a randomized control trial in which we are comparing uh, the effect of uh, camouflage versus no camouflage uh, in adult patients with predominantly acrofacial vitiligo, and the patches should be visible from a social distance. So they are randomized uh, into a two is to one ratio in the active versus control arm. All the other treatments are continued, and we assess uh, the, uh, the dermatology life quality index and the vitiligo specific quality of life instrument, the VIS 22, and the FDLQI and the FVIS to assess the family members impact on quality of life. So at present, we've completed a recruitment of 40 individuals, out of which 13 are in the control arm and 24 in the experimental arm. And when we look at, uh, there's some interesting findings, if you may allow me to uh, continue. If you ask them, have they ever tried to conceal their vitiligo? 97% of them say yes. But most of them have used clothes as a means of uh, you know, hiding their vitiligo, followed by henna in 25%. And cosmetics have been used only by 20% of these individuals. And when we ask them why do they hesitate in using cosmetics, it's because they don't have time, it takes too long to apply it, there's a poor color match, or they're costly. And most of them cannot rely on camouflage alone as a treatment modality. Uh, so this is a, a video of application of the product, which I will just skip. And when we look at the mean DLQI scores and the VIS-22 scores, uh, we can see the blue uh, lines are the experimental arm and the orange lines are the control arm, and there's a significant reduction uh, within a period of one month. Similarly, there's a significant improvement in the family member's quality of life, a significant improvement in the participation restriction faced by the patient, and an imp a reduction in the global stigmatization, uh, an increase in the global stigmatization score implying a reduction in the stigma face. Most patients find uh, the camouflage cost-effective, easy to use, easy to remove, and gives a good color match and a good concealment property. And none of the patients have so far had any adverse effect, with the average time of application being about 13 minutes. And the longest lasting um, uh, effect of the camouflage is on the feet, followed by the neck for about two days, and the face and hands for about half a day. These are some pictures. Yeah, so finally, I'd like to share some learning points. It's a very useful addition to our armamentarium of uh, treatment modalities. However, we've seen that outside of a study scenario, the patient accept acceptability tends to be low, and that's probably because patients may feel that if they accept camouflage as a modality, it may impair the attention that they receive from a doctor, or due to the limited availability of the vendors and fewer centers which are offering it actively as a modality. And so we need to be empathetic towards the patient's concerns, and we have to reassure the patient that acceptability of camouflage does not mean that their treatment will be abandoned. And it's useful to have a color pa matching palette available in the clinic, and we can show the patient the uh, possible result we can achieve after camouflaging the patches. And it's good to have good contacts and you know, have the contact numbers of the dealers of the various camouflage products so that practically it is easier for patients to reach out to them. So I would like to thank you all, and uh, especially Dr. Shivangi, who is the uh, student who is doing the thesis on this. And this is our big AIMS Derma Departmental family. And uh, uh, this is at our annual dinner. And thank you so much. Thanks, uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kanika. Any questions? Yes. At the back. Outstanding presentation. Mm -hmm. I have more of a curiosity type question having vitiligo. As I progressively lost a significant amount of pigmentation on my face, it became more time consuming to apply camouflage. However, here's the curious question that I have.
could I use camouflage makeup to hide what little pigmentation I have left on my face to even out my color? Yes. Uh, so when I was explaining the methods of application of the camouflage, uh, when you're trying to conceal a darker color or you're trying to conceal an area which looks darker than the normal skin, what you need to do is apply a much lighter shade of the concealer and then top it, top it up with a normal skin colored foundation. So you'll need to choose a very light shade of concealer to first make the area look lighter than usual and then top it up with, your, with the color of your depigmented skin. So that's how you'd like to, you know, camouflage it to achieve a nearly type 1 skin look. Yeah. Uh, that's right. I know. Uh, so I, I haven't personally used it in any of these in any of my patients, and neither have I found it in the literature. But maybe Dr. Manish and I could collaborate on this because he's been working on depigmentation therapy, and then we could. Uh, uh, you I know, think work certain. Uh, yes, sir. Hi. So certain uh, camouflage systems, if I may take a name, Dermacolor, they have these products DFD, D64, D65 shades, which we, which are to hide the brown. Mm -hmm. So you, that could be tried. DFD, D64, D65. These mm -hmm. three shades are towards whitish tone. They are to hide the brown. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Rajendra. Sir, it is very difficult to hide the dark patch against your lighter color. Even these shades are very difficult. I produced a movie and in that we produced white patches and it was very difficult, very difficult to hide the skin. Yeah, but I agree with you, but those are the light shades which are available. Yeah, yeah, we have tried. Those them. are the light shades. And yeah. another thing, where your clothes... Uh, stay. Yeah, it, the color goes. It won't stay for more than three, four hours. But this, if I again may take a name, the product Microskin is superb. Yeah, I've been so using, uh, I've been it using is it. Very, it is very, that, very uh, costly means. and it is difficult to spray it all, you know. Uh, we so can you use need with not a use a spray. Uh, can you, use a sponge? you need not use an airbrush. Sponge. You can use a sponge, you can use an applicator to apply the same product. So this is the product that we've used for our study. We were promoted with earlier. airbrush, you know. Yeah, because you can it use an gives airbrush better. if it's a large area, you need an airbrush. But yeah. if it's a small area you're trying to um, hide, then even a brush application or a sponge application is good enough. If your skin is oily, it goes off because it yeah, is so made up of... On the face, it lasts for the least period of time, as, as yeah, we discussed. Yeah, because it is made up from the vegetable oils, yeah. it goes off very quickly if it is uh, on yeah. the oily you, skin, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, and in our country, we sweat a lot. That's true. So Here. Yes. Yeah. So Here. Then 9 to 12 hours is what we found in our study, and so it's not that bad, I mean... I mean Dharma color kind of wipes off more easily, and this is something that kind of sticks to the skin better. Yeah. Here, here. Yes, Dr. Uh, one of the problem is substantivity. As you have rightly said, it gets mm -hmm. washed off very frequently. So what you could do is, you could first apply henna over there, mm -hmm. stain the skin, and then apply camouflage. So that at some point of time, even if this gets washed off, yeah. the background is not white, but an orange skin. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. The, the last pigment which is left when there is no chance of a camouflage, like what sir was discussing, I do come across a lot of patients with the completely this one and few patches were left. I do an IPL laser to put a, produce a blister and it goes off and it matches the skin, almost the thing. So you don't require, if you have a laser with Q-switch 532, or an IPL with 585, you can easily blister off those lesion and it will match the skin very well. And evenly it matches. Thank you. The price is about... Uh, yeah, it is a bit more expensive than the others. But then if you... <laughs> Yeah. 
So actually, this is a study, so we are just offering it to our patients for free, and so the cost is not that much. So it's, it's not a real-life scenario that we are, uh, you know, we are presenting here, because the cost is borne by us, and so the patient does not bear the brunt of the cost for the study, at least. Yeah. One more? Last question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, excuse me, it's not a question, it's just uh, I want to say something about the language because you, we use a uh, camouflage and like you say, it's a French word and it means uh, you hide something. Yes. So in France, when we have a makeup uh, workshop, we don't use camouflage anymore. We use the, you know, makeup to bring out your beauty or enhance your beauty, sublimate your beauty, but we don't really use camouflage because we think it's... Uh, you know, you don't want to hide. You want to show what's beautiful yeah. in you. So, so that's, it's, that's it's somewhat of a negative term, which may, you may not want to use, uh, you know. Yes, it's uh, just and makeup as such, you know, in, uh, in layman's term, it, it has a slightly different connotation. You know, the products may not be that long-lasting. The fixing powder may not be part of it. So that whole, uh, you know, that whole uh, set of things that you use when you're doing a camouflage therapy is, uh, it's bet I, would, I would feel it's better termed a camouflage. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's nice that you actually conducted a study on this topic, which, you know, you nobody, you. it's not really a scientific topic, yes. but it is of great uh, relevance. relevance. Thank you so much. Thank you.